Tim, thank you for coming in and training with me today, mate. <laughs> My pleasure. Yeah, it's good. No worries, mate. I appreciate it a lot because I'm learning, learning every day off you and learning off other people. But, um, man, what are you finding with the training that we did today, just in there? And what are we trying to get out of it? Uh, well, look for me, that that kind of session is a uh, is a strength power session. Um, it's not it's not particularly fatiguing. It shouldn't yeah. be. You know, you shouldn't be rating it a 10 out of 10. Mm. Um, but, you know, that's not the goal of it either. It's, mm. it's, it's purely just, to, from my point of view, I want to I want to get stronger and more powerful yep. so that it, it improves my running efficiency. Mm. Uh, that's, that's probably my, my number one goal. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, if you get stronger and powerful, more powerful, then um, your, your running economy improves. Yeah. So for, in, in, my, in my park run, if I want to, if I want to get the time I want to get, I want to yeah. try and do it as easy as I can. I want to yeah. get out easy, um, and I want to have enough mm. enough uh, energy in the tank to yeah. come home strong. So yeah. that's that's the whole reason behind a strength and power session like that for me. Nice, nice. It's interesting, right? Because I think we've previously I've gone to train to push my body to it, push my body where I'm physically really sore the day after, and then you know you're trying to slowly die off the week until you come good for the weekend to play or whatever you're doing but yeah. um just watching um i don't know if you've seen the documentary on latrell mitchell um coming back from his rehab he went to the states um and did his his hamstring rehab over there and the, the stuff that they got him doing wasn't physically demanding it was just working on his chains of movement yeah um and obviously seeing him now he said he had to change his full walking pattern and everything just to get back so it's really interesting yeah. but, but when it comes to training as such I think I've always been in this mentality of it's got to be like you're, you're bashing your body to the limit of yeah. I'm sore, it's moving, it's working, you know, so. Yeah, look, I, I mean, I, I, I still think there's people out there who, who believe that and there's yeah. certainly a, a place for hard work yeah. um, where, you, where you actually have to take yourself to a dark place yeah. in, in certain sessions. Um, but for me, I do it as part of a, a plan. Yeah. Um, I know that... I'm going to do. I'm going to do high stress days. Yeah. That are um, metabolically going to be very taxing. Um, neuromechanically, they're yeah. going to be taxing as well. Um, but in between those days, I make sure I have a lo lots of low stress days as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a few reasons for that. One is it helps me recover. But if if I make my low stress day a little higher. Or yeah. a medium or a high stress day, then what that does is it, it actually takes away from my true high stress days, ah, right? Good. So I want my high stress days to be as high as possible. Yeah. So that means to, to get up here, I've, I've got to make sure that the low days are really low. Mm. It, it enhances my chances of making this what I want it to be, yeah. what it's intended to be. Um, yeah, and I, I haven't watched the Latrell Mitchell um, documentary, but, uh, you know, I think a lot of people might have thought he's going over there and he's 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 going to get um, he's going into a military style yeah. camp. Um, you know, there, there would have been a lot of discipline around mm. what he needed to do. But I, you know, from what I can see there, it looks like he had fun. Yeah. Um, and and I you know I read an article about about it and you know one of the key things I took away was it. it it was about drawing his athletic qualities out of him. Mm. Everyone knows he's got them. It's just bringing them out of his body. Yeah. Um, you know, and just the way he's been playing since. Yeah. It, it looks like he's, um, it's done his wonders. Yeah, I think, you know, like you said, going out and going to the States probably gets him out of the bubble of Australia. The NRL so intense. And when are you returning? When are you returning? And he re well, now he's returned. He looks great. But he was saying how he's learned that he doesn't have to be 100 sprinting every, every aspect now. You know, he can pull off now and then he, I think when you're younger you just want to go you know 100 yeah. miles per hour all the time but just knowing you can't pull back and move a bit more freely um, but you know with sports science growing and growing every day I think you know it is going to be a one thing's going to be working for a while and then they're going to improve again and they're going to look back on that idea and go that wasn't what yeah you know? it's a constant it's never an ending yeah I mean you're always you're always learning um and we're always we're always standing on the shoulders of someone who mm. came before us. Um, you know, the, I'd like to think that the uh, the, the principles of training, the the, the well-established principles of training that that my dad knew mm. twenty or thirty years ago, and and then the coaches before him, mm. they they knew there were certain principles yeah. that you you have to overload 
yeah. or, or, or you know you have graded exposure um, you, you, you have to train pretty specifically for your event you know we, we worked that out in the early 1900s yeah. um, that that the response to training is is yeah. very individual specific yeah so what works for you may not work for yeah. me and vice versa and um, and you need recovery yeah it doesn't mean that you you uh, you recover from your recovery yeah. sessions because I think some people go the other extreme and go well if, if recovery is important let's just keep recovering yeah. um, and you recover so much you just manage yourself away from training of course, of course. Um, so you know those those training principles I think are going to be they're going to stand the test of time I understand. Um, but we'll just there, there will be slight modifications yeah um, better ways to do things for sure hundred percent I think you know with rest, um, recovery like one thing I wish I did when I was younger, which I'm only starting to do the last year now, is we started to do um, reformer Pilates. Oh, yeah. And, and just those slight movements, you know, instead of going for the big muscles and, and big chains or however you want to say it, doing those little micro muscles, and the, especially for my knees and ankles, just found it really helpful. Like, I wasn't coming out there gassed, yeah. but I fell out there like, oh, I've done something there, you know. Been, you know, it's tweaking those little finer finer fibers and yeah. movements possibly. and might be placebo, but for me it worked. <laughs> no, nah, look, I, I see that as um, local tissue loading. Mm. Um, so, you know, something like um, Pilates will will find your your limiting factor. Mm. It'll find your weak spot. Yeah. Um, if you're doing it right. Um, but what what that local tissue loading does is it, you know, it, it's not gonna it's not gonna allow you to no. compete at a high level. But what it allows you to do is take on more load. Mm. So, so if this is the lowest level of load, local tissue loading, then the next level up is probably sports specific loading. Yeah. If you can handle that, mm. then you're in a position to handle the demands of the game. Yeah. So I see that as a pretty important foundation. Yeah. You know, when we talk about uh, NBA and the NHL, obviously they're playing around about 80 something games mm. a season. 82 games 82 a year. games a year. So like the, the load that they're putting on, the stress that they're putting on themselves is massive. So how, what would they be doing for recovery and how are they fitting in recovery? Uh, it varies from player to player, and, and not all recovery modalities are, are evidence-based. Yeah. Um, you know, so some players, some players like the Normatec boots. Some players like ice baths. Yeah. Some players like spas. Um, so, some players like to lift. Yeah. Okay. So they have a, like a, a movement-based recovery. Mm. It's not necessarily heavy strength work, but it's 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 a way of microdosing yeah. the strength dose. Uh, while also getting a movement-based recovery, mm. and then I guess there's others. If you end up in um, in New York or mm. or uh, Miami somewhere, maybe they they head out for a night and, <laughs> and they recover that way. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean that's a it's a different type of recovery because you're missing out on of sleep, course. but being able to just unwind and get Switch away off. from the sport sometimes helps as well. Yeah, what's his name? That guy for the play for the with the Michael Jordan and the stuff, Chicago Bulls. What's Dennis, his name? Dennis, Dennis Rodman. I think he was. Yeah, massive for that, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think I said, I've said this once before. He wasn't scared of much. He was only no. afraid of a good night's sleep. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's. Uh, but they, but he trained hard, just as hard as well, right. When you get back in the court or back in the gym, he'd be working just as hard as the other guys. Yeah, well, look, Phil Jackson uh, must have been ahead of his time to realise that you know that's that kind of that's what that player needed. Mm. And he, I mean, uh, he must have fit into the team yeah. to a certain extent. Um, yeah. But you know, when it, when he needed his time away, he was kind yeah. of allowed it. Hundred percent. With, with yourself, Tim, what's up next for you now? With, in the future, with workshops or um, going out to the states or wherever you're going next? Uh, well, this this month is uh, a competition month for me, so I've got a couple of races with nice. my son. Uh, we'll do one in Sydney and, one, and we'll do the Bridge to Brisbane here. Awesome. Um, so you know, together we'll we're going to work as hard as we can to get a, a good time. But we're in it together. Um, and then, uh, what are we in August? So September, October, there'll be a, a Europe and, and a US trip. Oh, and awesome. Probably a New Zealand at the end of that as well. Yeah. So the, the next, you know, September, October, November, we're going to be pretty busy mm. um, getting around to different places. So I'll do, I'll do workshops in a lot of European countries and then, and then head to the States and do a couple there as well. Awesome, mate. Mate, you're doing a great, great job. And uh, thanks for giving me some time today to teach me. Oh, a few no, things it's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me in. No worries, Tim.